looking over a little bit. I have one, one last thing to talk to you about today in connection with, with uh, passive voice. And this is a key thing. So we, we've talked about this, how when you take a, a regular sentence that begins with a personal subject like I threw a brick and you make it passive, you get something like the brick was thrown by me. That's our standard sentence with a passive uh, verb. Not all, we said that not all sentences have the by me, right? The brick was thrown. We don't know who did it. Right? We were innocent, okay? <laughs> stuff like that. That kind of stuff. We're not talking about that. But what we're talking about is how you say by me in English. Um, and that's how you do it. You use the, the word by, the preposition by, and you put the person who would be the subject of the active sentence, and I threw the brick, okay? Um, becomes an agent, in, in other words, the object of the preposition by in the expression by me. And we want to talk about is how you do that in Greek, okay? And English doesn't distinguish between the things that Greek does distinguish. In Greek, you, the way you say by me and the brick was thrown by me is one way. Um, when, the, when the verb, or in any other form, but when the verb is either perfect or pluperfect, okay, when it's the brick had been thrown by me, or has been thrown by me, okay, then you do something different. So there's no difference in them conceptually. In English, we do them by the same thing, that is by plus me. Mm -hmm. But in Greek, and we're going to move to the next page, they're treated differently. Why this is, I'll explain in a moment. But in Greek, you have uh, two, two constructions. One, which is for everything except the perfect and pluperfect. And that is, you the, you translate the English word by with a preposition hupa, okay? H-U-P-O, with an accent on the O. And the object of the preposition, the be, uh, if there is a be, or the person, or the whatever it is, okay, um, that is the agent, goes in the genitive case. Very straightforward, totally consistent, all the way through Greek, okay? Um, but... In anything, in, in, that works for any kind of passive verb with an agent construction. Um, and, and it's something to look out for. It'll help you to understand what's going on. It'll help you tell whether a Greek verb really is passive, okay? Because so many of the forms are both passive and middle, you, you need a hook, okay? And the hook on the genitive is very helpful. But you have to remember one trick, okay? And this is the big gotcha. That is, when the verb is perfect passive, or pluperfect passive, those forms with the reduplication, the aspiration of the final consonant and the missing thematic vowel, okay, then the uh, agent is expressed by sim a simple dative case, okay? There's no word for by, you just put the person in the dative, okay? And you have to figure out what the heck that dative is doing. Now, um, there, are, there are enough clues so that these, you have to get yourself associated in your head, okay? That's why we made a little picture of a light bulb. The light bulb has to go off. When you see a perfect or a pluperfect passive, or those forms without the thematic vowels and with the reduplication in them, okay, when they're, when they're consonant stems and stuff like that, you, that you'll, you'll learn to recognize them. But you ha it has to go off in your head and say, okay, if there is an agent in this sentence, it's just going to be in the dative case, okay? So we're, we're going to practice this. You'll get the hang of it. You'll get used to it. All right. Bye for now. <laughs> All right. Screen.